Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I am now going to go through question number 11 of the paper 4 of the February-March 2020 IGCSC Cambridge paper 0580 code. And uh, this is paper 4.2. This is a paper that did not take place because of COVID in February-March of 2020. This is for the, I think, the Indian region. And um, uh, the, the examining board released it I guess for revision purposes, and this is a very important question. You will not find a single question like this in any of the past papers at all, except for the, the specimen paper. Reason being, it's something that has been added for the syllabus in 2020. So you will not find a paper or question like this in any of the previous past papers of this particular specification 0580. You might find it in other examining boards, you might find it in uh, AS papers or additional math papers, but not in this examining board. So it's a very important question for that reason. So now, this question tells us about a curve with equation y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 4. We have to work out the coordinates of the two stationary points. Okay, now, what we have to understand is a curve, okay, it is something where the gradient is constantly changing. So y equals x cubed, um, a curve when you've got y equals x cubed and some other bits added to it as well like here, generally it will, it will have this type of shape, something like this, okay, have that type of shape where it goes up and then up again, or it could be that it has this shape, okay, that's the two possible kind of shapes if it's something in this form. However, because the coefficient of x cubed is positive, it's definitely got this shape where it goes up and up. Okay, so this will continue down, this will continue up, but it goes this, it has this type of shape. As you go from, from left to right, it goes up and then up again. This is the shape if it's a negative x cubed. So we know for sure that this curve has this type of shape. I'm just like introducing you to the topic. You don't really have to uh, know this to answer part A. I'm just introducing you to the concepts of this particular topic. Now the stationary point in any curve is a point where the gradient of the curve becomes zero. A point where the gradient of the curve becomes zero. And if you remember from uh, you know graphs of functions, to find the gradient of the curve you need to draw a tangent. So that's the gradient of the curve at that point. I would find I draw the tangent I'll find the gradient of the tangent. Now if the gradient of the curve is zero that means it's going to be horizontal. The tangent will be horizontal. So the gradient is zero at the point here and the point there. Those are called the stationary points, the points of zero gradient. So that's our objective, to find the coordinates of these two points. Now, to find the gradient of a curve, you could sketch it or you could draw it accurately and then find the places where the gradient is zero. However, we have to work it out and calculate it in a different way. And we in, in IGCSE, they have introduced um, a concept called differentiation or you know where you basically try to find out what the gradient function is for any given equation so the gradient function is found by what's called differentiating the equation of the curve so we have y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 4 now the gradient function is given by dy dx and that kind of means the change in y over the change in x, which is what we know as a gradient. So this is a gradient function. And the gradient function is found by multiplying by the power, to so get 3 times x, and then taking 1 from the power, 3x squared. The reason behind that, maybe you we're going to go, when you do AS maths, you go into more detail about it. Right now, the, the important thing for you to know how to do it. So 3 times x, Take, you multiply by the power, and then you take 1 from the power. So multiply by the power, 3x, and then take 1 from the power. So always multiply by the power first, and then take 1 from the power. And here you got, well, there's actually a power of 1 here that's not written. So you multiply by the power, and you're going to get minus 3. And then you'll have x to the power of 0. Take 1 from the power. Now x to the power of 0, as we know, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this becomes just 3 times minus 3 times 1, which is minus 3. And then what do we do with the constant? Well, a constant... If you think about it, if, it, if we're differentiating in terms of x, in terms of x, 4x, 4 is actually 4x to the power of 0, because that becomes 1, so that it's actually that. And if you multiply by 0, it becomes 0, so that it just disappears. Any constant will just disappear. 
you can think about it if you had a, a, the line y equals 4 the gradient of that line would be 0 so the, the the gradient function for a constant is 0 okay anyway so we want to find so this basically this here this little this expression dy dx equals 3x squared minus 3 this will tell us the gradient of the curve at any point we want so if I say what's the gradient when x is equal to 3 for example I put 3 in here. 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27, minus 3 is 24. So I know that the gradient of this curve at the point when x equals 3 is equal to 24. But we want to find, we want to kind of do the opposite. We want to find what the value of x is at the stationary point. And what did we say? We said at the stationary point, the gradient is equal to 0. At the stationary point, we know that dy dx must be zero so we want to find the values of the values of x for which dy dx equals zero so we can say therefore we're trying to find when 3x squared minus 3 gives you zero and if you were to now um, solve this we could divide everything by three it's fine dividing by a constant to get rid of that common factor so you got x squared minus one equals zero so we can say x plus one is zero and x minus 1 is 0, that's the difference of squares. So x equals minus 1 and x equals plus 1. Or we could say x squared equals 1, x equals the square root of 1, which is plus or minus 1. Either one of them is fine. Anyway, so that, that, that tells us the values of x at the stationary point. Okay, at the two stationary points. So we know that one of the values of x is minus 1 and the other one is 1. Those are the two values of x at the stationary point but they're asking us to find the coordinates and of course you can see in the answers there's a y coordinates missing okay which is good that they give you this in some like as questions for example they don't have an answer space like that and they say why well, work out the coordinates and you have to write the answer some people forget the y coordinate but here that's like a reminder to you that no we have to find the y coordinate as well now how do you find the y coordinate at the stationary point well, what we don't do, which I see quite often, is people try to re substitute these values into the gradient function. And, you know, of course, what you're going to get is 0 because we just worked out that this equals 0 when x equals minus 1 and 1. So dy dx doesn't tell us the y coordinate. No, it tells us the gradient at that x point. We want to know what y is at when x is 1 and minus 1. So when x is equal to minus 1, you're going to have y equals, now you're going to have minus 1 cubed, minus 1 cubed, minus 3 times minus 1 plus 4. So that's going to give you minus 1 plus 4 plus 4. So sorry, plus 3 plus 4. That's 7 minus 1. That's 6. 7 minus 1. That's 6. And when x equals 1, you're going to have y equals 1 cubed minus 3 plus 4. That's 1. Uh, that's 5 minus 3, which is 2. Okay, so when x equals negative 1, y is equal to 6. When x equals 1, y is equal to 2. So those are the coordinates of the stationary points. Now part B says determine whether each stationary point is a maximum or a minimum. Okay, we kind of already uh, looked at that here, you see. The maximum is a place where it reaches its highest point at that point at that particular area. So this is a maximum and this is a minimum. Maximum it goes goes up and it go it doesn't go higher than that in that particular area and then it goes down again and here you've got a minimum it comes down it goes to the lowest point in that area and then it goes up again in a cubic it's not an absolute maximum because it, this will go higher up there and this is not an absolute minimum it's going to go lower down there but in these particular areas that's a maximum and that's a minimum so what we have to understand here um, there's two ways of answering this question one is by looking at the shape so when you have a cubic curve okay it will be easy if it's not cubic, which I don't know, I don't, I guess maybe you might, might face it, but if it's not cubic and you don't know what the shape of the curve is, then you have to res res resort to the second method I'll show you. But if we know the shape of the curve, we know y equals x cubed, what was it? Minus 3x plus 4. Okay, we can say as the coefficient, the coefficient of x cubed is positive, Okay, then it will be the, it will look like this, rise and rise. Okay, this is the shape. The shape will be like this. So we can see that the the maximum the maximum point comes before the minimum point. Okay, so the x value which is less will be the maximum, and the x value which is more will be the minimum. So the maximum is minus one, 
and 6, and the minimum was 1 and 2. Okay, so we can say the maximum is minus 1, 6, and the minimum is 1, 2. Something like that. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Okay, this is when x equals minus 1, and this is when x equals plus 1. In this particular question, I think that would be fine as your answer. However, there's another method which is taking what's called the, the second differential. And what that basically does is, um, so let's just write down, we've got y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 4. All right, so we've got the first differential, which is a gradient, dy dx equals 3x squared minus 3. Now, when you are differentiating something, you are finding its rate of change, how it's changing. If I find the second differential now, dx, d squared y over dx squared, that means I'm differentiating the gradient function. This, this is how it's written, d squared y, dx squared. It's like I'm taking the gradient function, which is dy dx, and I'm differentiating with respect to x. That's why it says d squared y over dx squared. No, don't have to worry too much about that. But anyway, so the second differential of this is going to be 6x, and that's going to become 0. 2 times 3 is 6, take 1 from the power, that will be power of 1. Okay, now... So this tells us about how the gradient is changing. Okay, that's what it tells us. Now, if when x, so we, let's, let's find what x equals, x equals minus 1. If you put that into the second differential, d squared y over dx squared, you're going to get 6 times minus 1, which is negative 6. So as the second differential, d squared y over dx squared, is less than 0, Therefore, x equals minus 1 must be a, a maximum point. Okay, if it's less than 0, it's going to be a maximum. Okay, if the, sec if the value of x at a particular turning point, with a particular stationary point, makes the second differential negative, then that value of x is a, x is a maximum. And if it makes it positive, as we can see here, d squared y over dx squared is equal to 6 times 1, which is 6. So as the second differential is greater than 0, therefore x equals 1 will give us a minimum. So we can say that minus 1 and 6 is a maximum, and 1 and 2 is a minimum, as we found earlier. Okay, so that's something that you should know. And if you don't understand it, I'm, I'm going to explain it for those people who might understand it. Hopefully you'll understand it better in, in AS maths. But basically, if you have a, a gradient like a maximum like this, going up and then down, that's like a maximum. This is like a minimum. It goes down and then up. The gradient is changing in such a way here that it starts off positive. As you go along this way, it starts off positive and quite big. If you draw a tangent here, it's going to be quite steep. Okay, And as you go along, the gradient is getting less and less and less and less comes to zero and then the gradient becomes negative okay so the the rate of change of the gradient is negative the gradient is decreasing is decreasing this whole time so the rate of change of the gradient is going to be negative. d squared y over dx squared. If I see how what that this tells us the rate of change of the gradient, when that's less than zero, you have a maximum. Because the gradient is, is changing in such a way, it's starting off positive and large, it's getting close, it's getting less and less and less. It, then it becomes zero and says it becomes more negative. So for example, it might be like five, then four, then three, then two, then one, then zero, then minus one, then minus two, minus three, minus four, keeps getting lower and lower. So at maximum, the rate of change of the gradient is negative because it's decreasing. And in a minimum, what's happening to the gradient? Well, it's starting off negative. It's starting off negative. And, you know, it's like, for example, that might be, say, minus five. And then it's starting to get shallower, so say minus four. And then even shallower still, say minus three and so on, minus 2, then minus 1, and then at the point where it turns, 0. So it's like increasing. It's going from a like minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, and then once it's past the turning point, it's starting to become positive. That's like, you know, say 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4. You can see that the gradient is increasing, okay, as 
you go along from, from left to right, the gradient keeps getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so that's, you can see the gradient is increasing. So the rate of change of the, of, uh, the rate of change of the gradient, which is, de whoops, which is, what happened there? The rate of change of the gradient is d squared y over dx squared. In this case, it's greater than zero. So you can see at a minimum, okay, the rate of change of the gradient is greater than zero. That's why when you substituted x equals um, minus one into here, you end up with a negative value. So x equals minus one is a place where you have a maximum. The rate of change of the gradient is uh, negative. It's, it's decreasing. And where you put x equals 1 into this function, you got d squared y over dx squared. It gave you a positive value. That means when x equals 1, you have a minimum, minimum point because the gradient is increasing. It's going from negative to positive. Here it's going from positive to negative. So that's the reasoning behind the second differential stuff. Okay, and that's perfectly fine if you, um, you know, it's good if you understand that. Um, for, for a cubic curve, this is sufficient as your answer. If you just tell them about the shape and the, f the minimum must maximum must be for the minimum if it's a positive x cubed if it was a negative x cubed if it was a shape like this then you would say oh the minimum comes before the maximum so the lower x value would have been the minimum but it's not that shape so you're fine okay so there we have the answer to this last question in this paper it's a very important question as i said because you won't find questions like this in any of the previous past papers to this apart from the specimen paper so i hope you enjoyed and i hope you learned and understood and um, i wish you all the best this paper is now completed if you would like to see other questions on the paper they will be uploaded in the playlist which should be over here somewhere when the video ends and you, if you want to see questions about differentiation i've collected together the questions that do exist in the specimen paper and this paper and any other papers i do uh, you know find I, I'm also using some AS papers and some some um, additional math papers to find questions about differentiation so that you got some more kind of um, you know examples of it I'll put them in the playlist over here if you want to subscribe to the channel you can click on the icon here and this playlist um, this card at the top will take you to the paper two of this particular um, session so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon